in final finishing. So obviously reflected colours are going to be something similar to what we see above and you can use whatever brush suits your fancy. I tend to use a, um, a flat bristle brush, sometimes a fill bit if, it's, if I really want to uh, get some very fine work. So we'll just get a little bit of that colour that we used previously. A touch of the reds, the greens. Just tests so that we've got it somewhere near right. And hold, you can either hold the brush like this very loosely or you can go back a bit further on it and just let it touch. There we go. And it's almost scraping the colour off on the weave of the canvas and the lumps of the paint that are underneath. So you can see it's still allowing a little bit of the shadow colour to come through. We've got a bit more green in here, so we'll just go over and pop that in. As the colour cools off. And you can rock the brush like this to get the colour to come off one side or the other. You'll notice there's a bit more of the bluey colour here, the blue-green. And we'll just streak that down. Leave the bottom edge of the reflection somewhat um, speckly, spotty or streaky because that's how it tends to be attenuated into the water. Having done that, we'll just pop a little bit in behind here, doesn't need to be much, and we can now move in and highlight this work over here. This will have ripples put back across it later. Okay, so these fellows here, we'll just um, bring them forward a bit further. We'll move now to our lovely ratty old um, filbert brush that I call my foliage brush, and we'll step up a level in terms of um, strength of colour and once again just working between the three primary or not primaries but the three basic colours we use for our foliage namely the yellow yellow green some red and some blue and we'll just test that to make sure it stands up it can actually go a little bit warmer I think just to make sure that it actually stands up from the background a little bit without being too dominant and hey presto, there we have it. Remember our <coughs> light is coming from this direction, so we need to make sure that it's those upper foliage bracts that are lit. And maybe just a little bit where the foliage comes out around this way would be lit on the front also. Not too much. Now I'll attenuate that colour by adding more blue and red, less green. And we'll just pop that in there. You can see it's a much more greyed off highlight. And whilst that colour, <coughs> pardon me, is on the brush, we can actually draw that down. Probably need a bit more of that, but never mind. And that's going to be a similar technique, just the brush held very loosely. And streak down into that water area. <clears throat> it's becoming a little bit solid, so what I'll do there is I'll just take some of the darker under colour and starting at the top here, just draw that back in to darken and grey off that area. Remember, this is still not the finished product, but it is certainly getting um, towards a point where we really know what we need to do to finish it, where we can refine certain areas and soften others, attenuate others. Just a little bit of shadow colour creeping back in here with a bit of warmth in it so that the illusion of light, directional light, is strengthened. Okay, a little bit of repetition there which I don't like. A bit like the three wise monkeys sitting in there. Okay. So the water will leave till last for ripples and refining the rocks and putting little bits of movement in it. What we'll do now is to move into re-establishing these trunks a little bit, getting a bit of highlight onto them. You'll notice the background foliage has wiped them out a bit. I'll also pop a few little branches in here, just for good measure. Just a few of the shadow coloured branches into here. Once again, any shadow colour is fine, providing the value is appropriate to the distance that you're working at. And you'll notice it picks up the colours of the highlights as well. So where I've pulled it into that, it'll now give me a little bit of colour down into here. Okay, a little bit of highlight onto that. We can 
and gave us some um, yellow ochre combinations of colour in here just to sort of give it a little bit of light where the light's still striking. Okay, and using that same colour, just to make it a little bit warmer now, I'm just going to pull that into this tree so we can actually get the trunk carrying a little bit of the warm colours which our light would sort of dictate as being fairly important. And just shadow off the back edge and we can clean that up a little bit later on in the detail stage. Okay. I'll re-establish these trunks now very quickly. Once again, our trusty little filbert brush, wonderful, remember, on its edge for doing this sort of work. And I'm just going to run that down the shadow side, load it on that side. Might need a bit more colour there. Don't let any of your strokes, if you can avoid it, finish on another stroke or angle because it looks as though it's, um, it's not continuing, it's part of that other mass. Yeah, and that can come down into the bushes just a little bit there to indicate that it is a slightly bigger, slightly closer tree. Now for some highlights. I'm going to go for some nice warm highlights in the yellow oranges. Once again, because of the, uh, the colour that we're using for our light. So we'll just load that brush up. and draw it down. This is just a practice stroke. Don't freak out if you happen to miss it, if you're a painter. Paints are very forgiving. Once they're dry you can paint over the top of them and no one will ever know it was there. Except you. And even you will forget it in time as well. Now this one I just need to attenuate because I don't want to draw the eye in here. So I'm going to kill that back with a little bit of its complementary opposite grade off. Yellow-orange would be a violet, blue-violet. I'm not going to make it too blue though because otherwise it will defeat the purpose. So just draw that colour back down into there. You can see immediately it starts to take the fire out of the colour and gives the illusion perhaps that there's a bit of diffused shadow beginning to creep in there. Pull a little bit up into here just break up the line of the tree slightly so it's not all fully lit along its length. Then I'll come back to my trusty full, uh, sable brush again, re-establish those little branches now that have been lost. I'm sorry if I'm across the camera here but not much we can do about it. And just key them back into the trunk so that they're not sort of sitting out there like uh, appendages that have been stuck on in a different value and a different colour. There should be enough branches up here I think to do the job. We'll just whack a few extras in so we don't have vagrant foliage, that is no visible means of support. Just darken those junction points up a little bit there. Okay. Now on those parts I've just done, I'm going to go for an even brighter, lighter highlight and I'm going to use this little sable brush just to skim a little bit into here, which I'll soften in shortly. This gives the impression of light filtering through foliage and the like actually striking that much higher key highlight into those branches. And the overall effect of sunlight is, is strengthened again. Okay. Up into our top branches. Similar sort of treatment. Just on the right hand side, just whack a little bit of that light in. Don't worry if you overdo it, there's a tendency, I have a tendency to overdo it. And you'll need to go back in then and just do that little shadow trick that we saw earlier. 
But you'll notice that what's happening here is that because we have a, a soft um, bluey colour in the background, the orangey colours actually stand out more being complementary opposites. They're a little bit strong at the moment, but we won't worry about that just yet. Okay. Nothing to it. Some final highlights in there, and then I'll go back in with the um, shadow colour and just blend a few of the junctions back in so we don't have a continuous line of light. Remember where your light's coming from at all times. Don't get distracted and start whacking it on the wrong side of the tree. I've done that before too. Interesting, when you're working with students' work, or as I used to a lot, um, they would have their work lit on different sides or you know, even coming straight at you. And of course, you'd get into um, in automatic mode and you'd be moving from one to the other and you'd sort of carry on from the last work and find yourself highlighting the painting in the wrong side. And uh, they were very polite about it. Well, we've just, um, I say we, I've just put in um, the highlights, or the beginning highlights at least, on the branches of the large tree. We didn't show this as a stage because it's basically identical to what we've done here. That is the initial uh, body colour, uh, some final highlighting, and then a little bit of the um, shadow colours just to sort of blend and soften and break up any sort of long accelerating lines. I'm about to move in now and start work on the foliage highlighting. Now fortunately it's a lot easier to do this because the foliage is now dried. Um, our outdoor demonstration, when we do that, you'll notice that we're doing everything's wet in wet. So it tends to be a little bit rougher and a little bit more spontaneous. So our old scruffy filbert once again, and I've taken a mixture here once again